In Iran, protesters have been clashing with security forces, leaving dozens dead. They've been taking to the streets to oppose an unexpected 50 percent hike in petrol prices. This measure is the latest sign of pressure on the country's economy after the reimposition of U.S. sanctions. Meanwhile, the country has been experiencing a near total Internet shutdown. This in a bid to stifle the protest movement. To talk about that, we're joined by Mahsa Ali Mardani. She's the Iran program officer at the Human Rights Organization. Article 19 and a specialist in Iran's security and internet policy. She joins us from London. Mahsa, thank you so much for being with us and speaking to us here on uh, Middle East Matters. I want to start off with a look at the use of text messages in an unprecedented move. Iranians are receiving SMSs. They're being encouraged to report on each other if they are indeed taking to the streets. They're also receiving messages telling them to leave the protest areas. Yes, I've been hearing of this tactic. I think, uh, you know, telecom uh, towers have been trying to locate uh, cell phones uh, that are in the vicinity of protests and have been telling them to uh, vacate those areas. I mean, uh, I think this tactic is more to induce fear as it's not really identifying who's exactly at a protest location. So it's having an impact, potentially. Now, earlier I mentioned a near total blackout of the internet across the country. Some sources saying it stands at around 4 to 5%. Is that accurate? So uh, there's many different internet monitoring organizations doing really great work right now. There's NetBlocks, there's Internet Oracle, there's RIPE, uh, there's IOTA. So there's all of these different organizations that are trying to monitor the different, um, you know, assigned numbers for the different internet service providers in Iran. It's very difficult to have a exact overview of an entire nation's internet infrastructure but in generally it's uh it's it's pretty accurate to say that it is a near total blackout i think there's been ups and downs in terms of the amount of connections that have been coming through uh there's lots of people who have different internet connections that have been kind of sneaking through to the global internet and i mean personally i've been able to connect um with uh iranians on and off um who've been able to to find, you know, uh, more tech savvy routes to do so throughout the past few days. So I think, um, but they're offline and offline, and I think it keeps on opening and contracting these abilities that people are finding. And staying on that topic, why and how do you think uh, the authorities were so quick to react this time? Usually it does take a few days. I think we can think of a number of factors that have led to this really swift reaction. So it, it took the government about 24 hours to reach this near total blackout. It started Friday night when the protests started erupting in the smaller cities and we got reports of people in the streets being disconnected from their mobile networks. But by Saturday afternoon, most of the country was offline. And I think this is uh, part and parcel to a number of factors. One, it's been 10 years since 2009, uh, one of the biggest protest outbreaks that actually resulted in a 45 minute internet shut down uh, nationwide. And so since then, there's been a lot of both offline and online security developments that have been trying to prepare for days like this. Uh, during the 2017-2018 protests, we saw a little insight into this, but it was nowhere near the scale and swiftness of this because there is a lot of coordination that goes on, you know, working with all the different internet service providers across the country and trying to uh, coordinate the, you know, disconnection so um, this is definitely something they had been preparing for and also the development of the National Information Network was kind of a cushion for the government to know that if they did go offline, things like uh, banking, uh, finance, hospitals, you know, all of this national infrastructure that depends on internet connections could remain on a national network and in some ways, you know, the country wouldn't come to a standstill. You mentioned banking and finance. I want to talk about the impact that this blackout is having on Iran's economy. 
Uh, there's been a number of sources that have estimated somewhere around 300 million U.S. dollars has been the cost of this for each day of this shutdown. It's uh, it's not entirely known. Like I said, um, you know, the banking infrastructure that has been relying on the National Information Network has been experiencing technical glitches. So um, I'm sure the government is uh, suffering economic impact uh, just from this, and we can see it from you know the currency fluctuations right now as well. Mahsa Ali Maagani, Internet Researcher with Article 19 and the Oxford Internet Institute. Thank you so much for being with us here on Middle East Matters. Thank you.